Hi everybody, happy holy weekend. Uh, this video is gonna be a little different than the ones I've done before. I'm just gonna talk straight from my heart about what's going on in the world and, and why I'm doing this, because I think that uh, it, it's an important reason. And I think that maybe uh, it, it's, it's, it's a time where we can really look at things and start to examine how we, we do things. I'm recording with my, my regular clothes on because it's not a scrub top that makes me a doctor. It's, it's not uh, you know a picture on the wall. You see these people getting on social media talking about Plaquenil and hydrochloroquine and remdesivir and things that they don't even know about and telling you that this is the miracle cure you've been waiting for and to go drink quinine and, and all this ridiculousness that has nothing to do with reality. Well, we, I'm gonna tell you what makes a doctor, what makes a medical doctor and why it's so important for you to get information that really makes sense. A medical doctor looks at the world with scientific eyes. We want to believe in things. The guy who did the study in France was not doing the Plaquenil and, and azithromycin from the top of his head. He didn't guess that that was a good treatment. It had been used before in other diseases and he wanted to see if it would work in this disease. And what he did is called a case series, an uncontrolled trial. It's not the best type of science, but it's science. And it started the investigations that we're doing at every institution in the world. At New York Presbyterian, where I work, I'm the chief of sports medicine. I have a background in family medicine. I trained in, in uh, Christ Hospital in New Jersey. I'm telling you my credentials because it matters. You should look people up. You should know what they, where they come from. What did they study? How did they get where they are? Why does their opinion matter? This is what we have lost as intelligent people in this country. We have forgot that people studied and worked to get where they are. And there's a reason why somebody has a voice and somebody else doesn't. There's a reason why when you get sick, you go to a place like New York Presbyterian where we treated 70% of the patients in New York City where icons of mine, Bill Levine, Chris Ahmad, uh, fellows in spine, Joe Lombardi, who have studied their entire life, put themselves on the front line of an epidemic. I've been recording these videos from my bedroom, day after day after day, trying to get information out that you can use. Hydrochloroquine and Plaquenil are not medications that are going to save your life. They may have a tiny effect on this disease. You know what's gonna save your life? It's gonna be the critical care nurse like Christian Narducci at Staten Island University Hospital who is going to take care of you while you're unconscious on a breathing tube when your lungs fail. It's gonna be the doctors and nurses that decide to dialyze your kidney like our good friends who are being treated at NYU. It's going to be the day-to-day -day care, hour after hour for your grandmother, your grandfather, your aunt, your uncle, your sister, your brother, if you get sick. And the people who are telling you to stay home, those are called population health specialists. These are people who study the way that diseases spread in populations. They didn't decide to keep people home because they're trying to crush the economy. They told you to stay home so that you don't get an infection that we don't know how to treat yet. So when you're watching these videos, maybe if I yell and scream into the camera and act like a moron, you'll pay more attention. I don't know. I have no idea. But if a chiropractor is talking to you about medication, he is going above and beyond his license. He has no license to prescribe medications because he hasn't studied the science that goes behind prescribing medications. You should never take advice about medications. I'll give you an example. Advice about medications from a chiro chiropractor, that should say. I'll give you an example. I had a patient call me who was seeing her psychologist. The psychologist has a very specific skill set. They do not prescribe medications. And so when the psychologist had an inkling about a medication, she called me to talk to the patient so I can evaluate the risks and the benefits and whether or not this medication would be appropriate for this particular patient. That person was operating within her license. I work with chiropractors. They'll manipulate the spine. They'll massage the patient. They'll stretch. They'll perform rehabilitation techniques. They'll, they'll do everything within their license to help a person open, expand their lungs, work on posture. Fantastic. Teach exercise. Wonderful. When it's time for medication, they call me. So when you hear a chiropractor talking about Plaquenil and hydrochloroquine, medications he has no concept of because he didn't study the biochemistry that goes behind those medicines, nor does he understand viral replication, and he's telling you to drink quinine, he has no idea what he's talking about. There is so much misinformation out there. There is so much that people wanna yell and scream into a camera to get attention on themselves. I'm not a doctor because I wear a scrub top. I've been recording these videos from my bedroom while my wife is shopping and bringing the food in the house and the kids are studying at the kitchen table and we're all socially isolated. I've been to the hospital a total of two times since this thing began because we are socially isolated for a reason. So on this holy weekend, just like you go back to church when something is terrible in your life and you look to God to solve your problems when things are at their worst, 
People are running to doctors right now when things are at their worst. And we're here for you and the nurses and the people who work at the hospitals who are taking care of you. Stop listening to this idiocracy that we've made for ourselves in this country. Stop listening to people who have no right to give you information. Start to pay attention to the people who have studied and work in the places you're gonna end up when you are at your sickest. Start to find out what the people's credentials are that are speaking to you. I'm a doctor of osteopathic medicine. I studied in Stratford, New Jersey in a system called the University of Medicine and Dentistry of New Jersey. I then went on to residency at Christ Hospital in Jersey City. I studied family medicine where I saw population diseases that came from all over the world because it's a mecca of immigration. I saw things that changed my entire world during residency. I went on to work in a drug rehabilitation clinic for a short time as a medical director. I went on to fellowship in sports medicine and a combined program with Rutgers at Robert Wood Johnson and Jersey Shore Medical Center under the guidance of two wonderful people, Rob Monaco and Steve Rice. I'm not telling you this because I'm, I, I'm, uh, I wanna inflate myself. Or, or, I'm telling you this because there's a pattern and a, and a way to get where you are to be able to say something with confidence. And I'm saying with confidence that hydrochloroquine and Plaquenil, these are medications that may have a tiny effect on your overall care. They are not miracle cures. You should not be running to the supermarket and drinking quinine and thinking it's gonna save you from SARS. It's not. Let's wake up, let's get smart. Does zinc have an appreciable effect? Maybe. Zinc can help a little bit. We take zinc, we take vitamin C here in my house. Is it going to protect you from SARS? No, it might boost your immune system a little bit. You know what's gonna boost your immune system even more? Sleep well, get seven or eight hours of sleep. Stay hydrated, eat nutritious foods, not processed garbage. Maybe take 25 minutes or a half hour to, to sit quietly and meditate or pray or do a rosary or something that calms down and erases all the distractions of your life and takes away some of the stress. I say this as I'm looking into a camera recording and posting on the internet that you're, you're so addicted to that we all are, but let's take a break from it on this holy weekend. Let's take a pause from all of the misinformation, all of the garbage that's going around in the world. Let's start to think about where and why we do what we do. I'm going to give you one more example. People look at investors and they say, oh boy, wow, how did that person make so much money in the market? Warren Buffett. What do you think? The guy guesses? What do you think? He sits in his office and he just picks a stock by sticking his finger on a newspaper? The guy reads hours and hours and hours a day. He researches. He understands the fundamentals of how the company works. People like Joel Greenblatt, these investors do not put their finger on a computer screen and pick a stock based on their intuition. They pick companies that are run well. They research the nuts and bolts of these factories. They research the nuts and bolts of how the organization is put together. They understand the, the tax structure and the way that the company does business. They understand the difference between a good company and a bad company. They understand the difference of value and intuition. If you're a gambler and you go into a casino and, and you put some money on red or black and you win, does that mean you have any more intelligence than the next guy? We're not guessing here, folks. That's the point. Economics, medicine, the people who are successful in these fields, they're reading constantly. That's what I've been doing for three weeks, reading research, writing papers, working with my peers, trying to figure out answers to problems using science. So take a pause, think about what's important, start to understand who you're going to trust, where you should get your information. And let's start to think about investigating things. We have the tool right at our fingertips. Type it in your search engine. Look up the person who's talking to you. Figure out where they're coming from. What are their credentials? Saying things that make people feel something like a conspiracy theory, like somebody's trying to hide the best treatments from you. Yeah, it, it plays on the curiosity of the human mind. That's what we are, we're curious creatures. Human beings are curious creatures. And so when somebody incites that curiosity with a conspiracy theory, it starts to ignite that dopamine in your brain. And then they give you an answer, a simple answer that seems like it's right. We're problem solvers. We like to see the end of the puzzle. We'll sit and put together a 10,000 piece puzzle just to see what the picture looks like at the end, right? If somebody gives you the easy solution, it rewards your brain. It seems like you've solved the problem, but that's not usually the right answer. Sometimes the simple things are the right answers. Sometimes somebody's lighting a conspiracy theory in your brain and it's lighting up that dopamine and they're giving you a simple solution and it seems like you have the answer you've been looking for. That's not how science is done. It's done in tiny millimeters of progress and that's what's happening right now. We've got our trials for remdesivir and antiviral. We've got trials for hydrochloroquine and azithromycin and the results are not as promising as we thought. 
And that's what medicine is. There are trials and errors and we learn and we grow and we share information based on experience. Have a blessed weekend. Stay tuned for better information from good sources. I'm going to keep trying my best to give you a, a sound voice in the chaos. And um, I hope you're all well and I hope to see you all soon.